Hey guys, this is Shredder James bringing you guys a special video. Well, not really a special video. This is the start of our new Let's Play with the Sermon. So guys, um, it took me a while to get to this series because of different stuff like school, events, and social life stuff. But finally, I'm here. I'm finally ready to do this. I'm finally ready to announce what country won now. This was a very confusing system I devised. I mean, in the future... Oh wait, this music might be a little bit loud. Let me make sure it's not too overbearing. Let's, let's turn it down to like here. Okay. So basically, the voting system was a little bit confusing because I probably should have specified that likes do not count as a vote. And because I didn't specify that, it basically turned into a massive cluster, yeah, with my entire voting system, especially with the comments and everything. It was insanely hard. So what I did was that I counted, just kind of did two different poll systems. I did one with likes and I just counted all likes straightforward and everything. And then I did one without likes and counted the votes all with that. And with both with both times we had just slightly big different variations in terms of where the placement was. But the country that you guys really wanted me to play as, I was personally shocked at, was you guys wanted me to play as the Ottoman Empire. Which surprises me a lot because in general not many people usually ask for like an Ottoman let's play I mean like we usually get the usual America the Germany the French the UK the Russian the Chinese the Japanese uh, maybe some occasional South American countries but I usually never get a let's play that centers around the great sick man of Europe so yeah I'm actually pretty happy about this and I really can't wait to do this so um but just so you know guys off the bat um, this is going to be trying to do a World Conquest series, and we are going to be trying to World Conquest with the Ottoman Empire, but I'm going to point this out very quickly and very sternly. It's going to be, it's, this is going to be a hard let's play. Just playing the Ottomans by themselves is hard, but then playing them with, uh, with the, uh, Sir mod might make it slightly easier, but could also make it insanely difficult. So, yeah, I just want you guys to know that, and, anyways... Let's begin, everyone, so see you guys in the game. Guys, here we are in uh, Victoria 2, where I will be starting this massive and cool new campaign. And basically, off the bat, we have to deal with a couple stuff. One, in terms of production right now, we are a fully state capitalistic country, so that means I can actually control my government this time in terms of industrialization, which is really critical if you want to win as the Ottomans, because the Ottomans... Just in regular Victoria 2 are an insanely hard nation to play as, and what we definitely don't want to come to pass is us becoming the sick men of Europe. Okay, we want to definitely become the ultimate domination matrix, whatever you want to call it. We want to become a dominant person on the map. So, our uh, first opening moves that I'm going to I'm gonna have to deal with right now is first get our budget in order. Budget, we're basically gonna have to tax our people to utmost insane ludicrous speed, whatever you want to call it. Levels. So, let's do that. Um, right now, we are also fighting a war in Africa, which means I'm probably going to have to deal with that. Let me start grouping up all my civilians. Uh, yep. You guys go all the way over here in, Autumn, in our Ottoman capital, and we'll group them all over here. And from there, what we're going to do is start shuffling them over there. Uh, what else we also need to do is we're also going to build and need to build some clippers. So, let's build like 20 clippers, and we'll be fine. Because I really, the reason why is because I don't really want to deal with clippers. And then in terms of technology, the first technology that you're going to need to get if you want to survive as the Ottoman Empire, you're going to need to get freedom of trade. Because freedom of trade is such an important technology, guys. It is such an important technology. Especially if you don't have it, you need it. Next thing what we need to do is for our, our um, you know, national focuses, we're going to be working mostly on trying to get our government back into order. So first, let's get some bureaucrats around our place, because I'm pretty sure we're not Yeah. I figured that would happen. I'm pretty sure we were not definitely uh, the most uh, uh, centralized nation, I should say, at this time. And so we have to kind of get that addressed quickly. So let's just start improving our relationships around here. And from there, we're just going to slowly branch out around our entire nations. Okay, what else we need to do is, yeah, we talk about the wars. Um, we also need to, in diplomacy, get an alliance with the Great British right now while they still like us. Because I guarantee once we start conquering millions of nations, they will probably hate us. I mean, not just hate us, but they will hate us. So, yeah, we definitely have to get that started. Um, one of the other opening moves we need to start doing is we also need to start fabricating a claim on Persia and do a conquest, Kazbeli. Uh, many of you guys might be thinking, wait, why would I start with Persia? Why would I start with, like, 
Egypt or, you know, Austria. Well, I kind of need Persia just so we can have a good land access between us and the British. So that they can actually bring the full army over here to help me out. That's really the reason why. Okay? Okay. Um, in terms of our men down here, we should, once they combine, should be able to just defeat anything down over here. We're not... To, honestly, defeating Tripoli as the Ottomans is usually just a, more of a chore than anything. If you really don't honestly win with with the Tripoli, you really don't deserve to be like a conquester or a uh, really, really you don't deserve to be anything because it's honestly so easy to beat these guys. It's not even funny. Okay, so for right now, since we don't have that many uh, ships, in fact, we're still building up our ships. I'm just gonna ferry, ferry a very selective few around. Okay, once you get back. Wait, I'm just going to have to do it manually. Okay, and we're just going to have to be fighting. We're going to see if we can get this war done in one year. That's my kind of general goal, is to get this war done in one year. Can we do it, though? Uh, depends. We might be able to do it, but it's really, it's really going to be close. Like, I want to get this war done in one year and then be instantly on a conquest speed for the rest of the rest of the world. So let's go back here, go pick up these guys. Okay. There we go. Let me make sure that these guys actually have some good siege people. We don't have some good siege people over here. You guys are just made up of all horses. Who the heck devised that strategy of making them all up into horses? I, I know I know there was not an Ottoman plan to just use all horses in your army. The Persian men is everyone! Those no good Persians, they're coming for us! Yeehaw! They're coming for us! Wait, we're not Texas. Um, they're coming for us to... Gosh, I don't know any good phrases for the, for the Ottoman Empire, but... As we know, guys, the prospector has always been right. And when he says somebody's coming for us, they're coming for us. So, heed those wise wisdoms of the prospector and never doubt him. Because if you doubt the prospector, you are a heretic and should go die. Okay. Anyways, let's see. Now, how much do the British like us right now? Do they like us 200? No, they don't. Okay. Improve our relationships with them would be really good just so that we can, like... Make sure they're all happy and dandy with us, because if they're not happy and dandy with us, they might not join in, join in on some of our wars. Okay, 12. 12 in for me, that's not too bad for our first war. Alright, and I'm going to set rallying point for all future naval vessels right here. Um, since you guys didn't get the rallying point message memo, I'm going to send you guys over there right now. Go right over there. Okay, no, no. Go right in there. Thank you. Don't just hover around the Sea of Mandura. Actually go in the port. I mean, it might be a little bit awkward at, for, at first, but seriously, just go in there. Okay, next, you guys go right there. Start sieging a little bit faster. We're already in June 8th, and we still haven't gotten where I want to yet. Although, that's partly because we don't have a lot of troops here, and it's really slowing us down that we don't have a lot of troops. We do have one siege unit right there, so that should be able to speed up this by just a little bit, which is good. We also have a lot more ships, which is good, like, insanely good. So, that should be good right there. And, yeah, you see how much faster that goes with just one cannon? We just add one cannon to that group. It's amazing. All right. You guys group up. Now we have eight ships here, which means even more people can go on. Let's go. I know. I know I'm kind of over-maximizing everything, but right now our army is not exactly great. I should leave it like that. Our army is not exactly great right now, but eventually it will recover. It's just going to take us a little bit because right now we're dealing with a war. We instantly start out in war, which is like, so stupid. So stupid, and it honestly just detracts from our, I would say, greatness? And just causes more problems than it's worth. Alright, we're gonna need the seeds down a little bit faster, so... Um, but at this point, I don't know if it'd be quicker to just go group up our men, go send them in different places at random, or just keep as our strategy's been doing. I really don't know. Um, I'm gonna see if I can help this siege finish up a little bit quicker with just adding more men. Uh, should be able to finish in just about, yeah. Okay, moving down. Moving down to the next point. Let's see, our troops are going back over here. Oh, do we win the, uh, this one, oh, no. What are you talking about? Those Persians, they're not after us. They, they're totally nice people. They would never kill us. And that's my, uh, very, very, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't given that guy na a name yet, but I know the prospector and... The doubt, I'll call him the doubtful guy. I'll call him the doubtful. The doubtful is just like, he doubts everything that happens. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this army's not gonna survive. Oh gosh. Yeah, they have absolutely no supplies coming to them and no one wants to support them as soldiers. 
Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this war in one year. I tried. At least, at least for the record, I tried. But I, I think this is probably gonna take a much longer. This is most likely gonna be taking much longer time than I believe is possible. So that kind of stinks. But at the same time, as soon as we're done with this war, we can instantly go against Persia, conquer this land, and basically stabilize our economy. Because right now our economy is in massive flux and we need more taxes than what we are producing. Alright, we got our Casas Belli. It should not run out until November of 1837. That means basically next year we should... Okay, we should definitely be done with the sieges and all that kind of jazz by then. Oh my goodness, so close. We were so dang close. Ah, okay. Actually, you guys can come back because we're actually done with everything. You guys can actually go back to real land. Instead of all this, like, you know, kind of useless land down here. Just just saying, just kind of useless land. Let's get you guys back on the boats, go back to one of my places. And let's see, we're actually getting money right now. That's kind of cool. Okay, can we build any good factories right now? We can build a fabric factory and a cement factory. In fact, I'm going to start thinking about where I want to start building up industry, actually. Um... Let's see, we have a good coal factories. Where's our coal factories? Because I have to also think of where, where some good... Hmm, this might be a good place right here to put some coal factories. Because we want to already... We want to instantly start, like, getting up our economy. Like, while the economy is still new, we still want to get up our economy. So let's build one right there. Build a little glass factory. And then, like, over here, we could probably build a cement factory. Oh, we can't. Dang it. Okay, never mind. We got a little cement factory. It is impossible right now, but we were close. We were close. Okay, finally, we're done. It took us to February 6th to, be, to beat the, the Tripolians. Ah, oh, man, that was, that was kind of an annoying war. But anyways, now that we're done with that, now it's time to go to war against our good friends, the Persians, who are most likely going to kick my butt in, like, the first part of the war. But as soon as our good friends, the British, join in, we should be fine. So let's see. Declare war, conquest. Yes, let's see. Will Britain join in? That's the very important part. You have to make sure Britain joins in. Okay. Watch here, Moldavia all joined in too, which is nice. The British joined in. That's good. All right. Now we just have to wait for... We just have to wait for stuff. Okay. Next thing I have to also make sure I do is I have to also make sure the Russians like us. Because just in case of my uh, good friends, the... Uh, UKians don't like me, I might need the Russians to come help me out and bail me out of stuff, so... Yeah, Russia's my quick get-out plan. And there's all my little vassals trying to go do their stuff. Um, apparently right now, Serbia's in my sphere. I actually do want to kind of remove them from my sphere because... I already know for a fact they're just gonna cause trouble for me. They're not really worth it as vassals. And let's see. Does Britain have a land access through here? Hopefully they do. Hopefully they do. If they don't, we might have a little bit of difficulty trying to conquer all of Persia. But then again, we also have a good amount of vassals to help us out. Uh, yeah, we don't want we don't want Austria to hate us just yet. I mean, I want Austria to hate us, but not yet. Not yet. Not not quite yet. Okay, improve relationships with Russia. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's just mobilize, mobilize our troops, and let's see how much do we have. Not very much in terms of what we could possibly have. Let's go and start destroying some of these armies. Um, let's see. We may... Hmm. To get this war started, we may have to actually, like, fight a little a tinier nation at first. Like... I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but we may have to go after Punjab to get what we need. I hate to say that, but... Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, so Britain does not have any cores on the Punjab. Following countries have claimed here. Okay, um, let's see, we can honestly, I know it would be much easier just to, like, you know, do some small conquests. You know, it'd actually be, you know, it actually is easier if I just do a establish protectorate. That way I only get, like, 10, 10 infamy. Have the British fight that, and then have a little land access through that, too. Have the British fight that. And then go through Persia. I mean, this... Usually, I thought they were going to, like, get through a lot of spheres of influence to get here. But if I have to actually lay down a path for them, that's fine with me. I, I don't really care. We... Eventually, when, when, when you're just going for a world conquest, it really doesn't matter how you do it. It's just that you do it. So, yeah. We just need to get... We just need to get our economy stable. That's... 
definitely what we need to do. By the way, all troops meet right there. All troops that are troop management style go meet right there. So we're going to need to group up a good sized army. Especially for when all these guys are all dead. Yeah, I'm always starting to prepare for the future, people. I already know that my army is not exactly the most sturdy. And we already have problems dipping up, if you see what I mean. Look at all this. Alright, luxury clothes just finished up. That means we're good with that. Now we need to get our uh, education system. So we can start moving our education system in a more uh, enlightened manner, I should say. And let's see, we're beating the Persians up pretty badly here. That's a good sign. Oh, what are you talking about? We're not trying to kill people. We we just love to uh, uh, party. Yes, okay, so 3.5 infamy. That should constitute the British to still join in. That should actually give us a free, uh, a free amount of cores. You guys go right here. Go crush the rest of the Persian army. And there we go. Yes, 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 yes. And Persia's out for the taking. And now we can just quickly go move in. And yeah, everyone. Did everyone like the war I just did? Well, I shouldn't say it's over right now because that's kind of pure ignorance. We haven't even finished the war, but... It's basically over. It's basically over. And with Moroccan... Oh, with Kuwait, that means the British will be able to move through Kuwait, then get instantly... Alright, yeah, yeah. Then they're, they're gonna instantly have land access to Persia, as long as I keep this war open with Sadar a little bit longer. Okay, establish protectorate. Let's see, Britain, will you guys join in? Yes, you guys will. You guys... Oh, thank you, Britain. You guys are the nicest... You guys are the nicest, like, helpers ever. Like, seriously, I love you guys. I mean, usually I hate you guys because your power is usually unmatched by anyone else. But in this Let's Play, I love you guys. Okay, and then the British are going to go invade. Yeah, look, this is this is the British that are coming, people. This is this is where the British are literally coming with their powerful army, which is all the way back here. Yeah, please move your army over here, Britain. Seriously? Seriously, Britain? You don't want to be lazy. I know, I know sometimes you guys can be lazy people, but this time I don't need you guys to be lazy. I need you guys to come in and fight this war for me. I mean, it's, it would be the nicest thing you guys have ever done for me. I will pay you guys back in kind. Which basically means I'm going to conquer you guys later. But, for the time being, I'll pay you guys back in kind. Okay. And it looks like, yeah, they're making short work of all the army. Should be able to get a little bit closer to the Persians. Hopefully they, I'm going to see if I can keep this war going for as long as possible so that they can just transfer their troops over to this Persian land. I mean, we don't really need them to go over here. I mean, we are a bit definitely defeating Persia, but, you know, it makes our life much quicker, and apparently one of our bureaucrats, both of our bureaucrats have finished up. That means we finally have control over these two regions. That's good. We have control over that region. Let's get over control over this region. Establish bureaucrats right there. Establish bureaucrats right here. Okay. Uh, I think it's... Yeah, okay, I did the right region. Good, okay. And then for our only factory we have in our entire place, it's probably not going to grow for like a little bit because we don't really have much we can actually grow it on. But also, uh, what I was about to say was that where are all of our coal places? Uh, I know I want to create a good like gun factories over here, but for our coal places, actually this would actually be a good place right over here for a cannery. And right over here we need to build like, I think I'm going to build a cement factory right here, that way that they can start producing a lot of cement for us because I want to make sure we are a good producers of cement and different goods like that and let's see the Britons the British are moving in really quite rapidly they're doing exactly what I thought they were going to do as Great Britain I'm really quite proud of them go Great Britain man go Great Britain oh gosh and for us though we're just casually moving into the entire land of the Persians Persians aren't really getting up much of a threat anymore, because I guess they, they, they're not really mobilizing either, but I guess they don't really have an army, so like, it's hip -a -dip, we give up, which is a terrible idea, because even in death, you could sometimes win, so, just want to leave you guys with that, guess, why is this wisdom, I don't know, get a little bit less tariffs up, because we're going to have to keep our factories alive just a little bit longer, keep moving in right there, keep moving in right there, Let's see, and apparently I won this war, hmm, yeah, this is my land, <laughs> um, okay, so, what that means is that we now establish a protectorate over here, but it doesn't mean that the British still are not involved, so, we can't get war with Khalid, because we just went to war with Khalid, can we get war with uh, you guys, 
No, I don't want to demand concession because that'd be kind of stupid. Uh, this is kind of stupid at that in their own right, but can I get this big piece of land for a very minimal amount? Let us hope we don't get the full amount of infamy. Let us hope. Oh my goodness, that was so close. That was so dang close. Okay. And it's even more popular because I didn't even have to do that. Well, you know what? I'm just going to conquer this land just because I need a land access now to my good Indian subholdings. Even though I didn't really need Indian subholdings, we now have Indian subholdings. At least, well, I didn't need them right now. Well, at least now we have Indian subholdings, guys. Look at that. Look, we have Indian subholdings. That's pretty awesome. Okay. We do have lots of rebels in our country because, well, yeah, I'm a taxing, I'm a taxing person and people don't really like people being taxed that much, so it's understandable to a very, very good degree, but I wish my people would be a little bit more understanding about where our government is and how much we really do have to tax you guys to live. I mean, seriously, it's not like I just tax you guys because I want to tax you, it's literally because I have to tax you. I mean, if we didn't need taxes in this world, I'd be putting it all the way down to 20... Uh, you know what? This is actually something that would be really nice if we had, so that we have a little bit better research modifier, especially for our government, especially for how much our research is. We definitely need research modifier points. And we are conquering the Persians at a very slow rate. This would be so almost done if we had the British help. They are kind of helping, but they aren't helping. Okay, so once I conquer this last little piece right here, declare war, establish protectorate, Britain should join in, likely. Should join in, because this is such a tiny war that they would not dare. Yep, like I said, they wouldn't dare do that. Now, I'll definitely have a flood of British troops starting to come through the continent. And now we're definitely linked up with the British forever. That means if we ever need a war to fight, even if it's all the way, like, over here, we'll definitely have their support, which is going to be nice. My only complaint is that sometimes they actually send all their troops all the way from Britain, because I actually... Because, guys, I actually did play this before before I start doing this, just to make sure that it is possible to conquer the world as the Ottomans. I think it's about, it's fairly possible. It's just going to take a little bit. But sometimes they actually, sometimes the British are so stupid that they actually send all the men from India and send them all the way back up to Great Britain. And I'm just like, oh, seems like we're going to have to fin finish this thought next time, people. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.